Welcome to Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people from the Android community. I'm Chuki Chen, and today we are chatting with Etienne Caron. Hello, Etienne. Hi, Chuki. Where you based, and what do you do? Right. So I'm an Android GD out of Montreal, mm -hmm. and I work for uh, Intel Security on uh, the TrueKey uh, product. Great. And how did you get started on Android? Right. So my first first project was in 2008, first phone. I was based in Paris doing some consulting work. The phone came out. I couldn't get an iPhone because they didn't <laughs> sell it back then. So right. I was like, oh, wow, Google came out with a phone. So I ordered it. A contest came up uh, in Paris where we were. It was for young developers. Uh, I managed to get in. Uh, besides my age. And, uh, <laughs> You're young yeah. at heart, so yes, it's okay. Yes, that's right. Uh, <laughs> bike locating app, which was my first uh, little project. I sort of only really started professionally uh, three, four years ago at this point. Wow. So, yeah. But you have been doing it continuously since then. Yeah, yeah I've been wow. involved with the GDGs. And, Excellent. Yeah. And today we're actually going to be chatting about virtual reality because that seems to be your new passion. I've seen you given a talk at uh, Big Android Barbecue mm -hmm. on Cardboard. Yeah. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about that. Um, in case you have not seen Google Cardboard yet, it's really awesome. I will let Etienne describe to you what is Google Cardboard. Right, so uh, VR headsets are actually a pretty simple thing. You basically mm -hmm. need a uh, split screen on your device and mm -hmm. with the right viewer and two mm -hmm. lens that you know you project the, the images in the proper way and it, you get stereoscopy. And that's pretty much all there is to it. After that, obviously, you need something to allow you to do some head tracking. So phones are perfect for this, obviously, right? Because you have your uh, accelerometers and gyroscopes in there, so you can do a very affordable uh, VR. Right, so the way Google Cardboard looks is literally a cardboard. You slip your phone in and it has split screen so that your left eye and your right eye are seeing the same scene but slightly different so that it will be perceived as three-dimensional, right. am I right? Exactly. And then when you turn your head, the scene will change according to how much you have turned, hmm. which I feel was for me, it's like, whoa, this is awesome. Uh, when I was trying the Google Cardboard, uh, what, it came out maybe a year or two ago, or maybe longer. I, I think it was two years ago. It was okay. originally a project out of uh, Google had a project with the Cultural Institute in France. Oh, and they were okay. actually scanning uh, art pieces and trying to see if they could model them in 3D. And uh, two Googlers, I'm not sure if it was 20% time or whatever what right. it was exactly, but they came up with this idea. So um, and yeah. then they decided to go for the cheap, everybody can do it right. approach, which is great, right? Because if you want people to start experimenting, it's great to have access to yeah. that. So if I want to write a cardboard app, uh, how do I go about doing that? Right, so the fun part is that there's an easy SDK to use. Okay. Uh, so the cardboard SDK, you just go online, Google that, you'll find very quickly the site. Uh, yeah. It's basically a jar that you, it's a jar, not a dependency, sadly, that you install in your project. Mm -hmm. And it adds a wrapper over the usual OpenGL stack that you would get on Android that basically will give you the head track. So for people who don't know what's OpenGL, oh, yeah. like, what does uh, that do? So uh, open graphic language, OpenGL okay. allows you, it's a standard that was, that's from, I would say the a late 80s. Maybe so it has a long history. Earlier. Long history. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly available on all modern systems, be it desktop, mobile, etc. And it mm -hmm. allows you to do 3D rendering. Ah, so you're actually defining the objects programmatically. Right. And then by 3D rendering, you mean then projecting onto a 2D surface so they can be displayed on the screen. Because the screen right. is not a 3D. No, by, exactly. you know, By default, it's not a 3D. And then we'll... How about the split screen and the different positioning of the eyes, right? Right. Like that's the that's the is it the OpenGL that takes care of it, or is that the cardboard SDK that takes care of that? Right. So it's the cardboard SDK, uh, and that's where the magic happens. But the fun part is mm -hmm. it's actually relatively simple. All you're really doing is if you take a single, uh, uh, you know, a single usual, usually in, in a 3D scene, you can have your camera, right? And you mm -hmm. place a camera in a scene. All they do is they cast two cameras and do two different calls. So those are my two those eyes? Thing. Those are your two, <laughs> two, two cameras? Yeah. So the cameras are like split <laughs> apart for, the, for a few <laughs> inches, and that's all there is to it. OK. And that's how you get your perspective. And when objects are very close, obviously, you're going to get a bigger difference between the, the, the view panes, if right. you will. And then when they're further away, they're going to be pretty much uh, more similar. And how about the head tracking? Does that SDK also provide that? Yeah, so that's the big part that the SDK provides. Mm. Because if you want to do stereoscopy tomorrow morning, you can actually do it fairly easily with OpenGL. Okay. And you can even... Uh, All right, I can manually place camera one and camera yeah. two. 
Yeah, not very difficult. Right. And if you disassemble the cardboard SDK's mm -hmm. jar, you're going to find out that there's not that much code around that specific, specific part of the thing. Right. Head tracking is the more complex thing, uh, definitely. And the fun part also is that the cardboard SDK brings with it um, a standard where depending on, because you might be aware that you can tomorrow morning start out and- <laughs> He has a lot of plans for tomorrow morning, I yes, don't, but well, yes. <laughs> if, if you wanted to, you could decide, hey, I want to make my own cardboard viewer. I think cardboard is a cheap material. I want to make it out of, you know, uh, 3D printed plastic, or I want to have more knobs and controls on it. I want right. to have more buttons. So there's actually a standard, if you Google it, where you can des decide to uh, create your own. Actually, now that you mention it, I remember the cardboard that I got at Google I.O. There's a little magnet on the side. That's right. Uh, like, does, if I want to write an app that people can click on that magnet and it sends a message to my app so that I can react to it. Yeah. Is the SDK going to be detecting that yeah, as well? Yeah, the SDK well? is oh, going to nice. give you an event listener, so you can just register. So it's a piece of cake, it. right? That's like super easy to do cardboard apps. Are there yeah. cultures? Like, yeah. <laughs> all right. So we're talking about buttons, right? So one of the yeah. challenges is the spec doesn't necessarily say, hey, you ab absolutely need a button. You could decide, hey, I'm going to make a viewer and I'm not going to put a button in there. Okay. Or you could, you know, so your specs can be very different from one viewer to the other. So you as an app developer, right. Right. Definitely have to think, oh, well, uh, is, is there a button? Uh, what kind of headset uh, is the person actually wearing? Mm -hmm. Some headsets have straps, so sometimes people have the use of their hands. You could even, oh. come up, yeah. So there's the thing is the market is actually pretty fuzzy in the sense mm. that if you look at cardboard as the standard, it's fairly simple and clear what you get. You get a button most of the time, mm -hmm. you get head tracking, and you get you know decent 3D. Sometimes people came up, uh, a few manufacturers came up with better headsets and better quality lenses. The right. distortion is different. There's more options oh. for the input. You can actually buy Bluetooth remotes. So if you start thinking about all of these things uh -huh. and you want to make an app that's universal, you need to sort of cover all these corner cases and make sure that somebody that doesn't have a button can still interact with your app. That's so what is the kind of major mode of interaction then? Because your phone is kind of stuck in the cardboard. I cannot yeah, click exactly. on things. Like how, how besides turning my head, I right. guess that's the button. That's the button. So that's a pretty big constraint. Like how how do you go about thinking what can I do with the app? Right. right. So you might have some if people have tried like the cardboard demo apps, they, mm -hmm. they do some things like some they do some tricks like where you you put the cardboard viewer on the side to actually uh, hit the back button, ah. for example. So you can So the accelerometer can detect that you've yeah. done that gesture essentially. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So Tricks like that you can code into your own app. They're and not that is not good. a part of the SDK. Uh, maybe for that, I don't think that particular gesture is. Okay. And you have to think about different affordances for your users right. because there's a lot of little gotchas. For example, mm -hmm. uh, you can get drift. And drift happens because the phones are pretty good at detecting head tracking, but at some point, they're not going to have like perfect positioning all the time. Right. So what usually happens if I try a, a nap uh, on my sofa, for example, I'm, I'm starting the game like this as yes. so. After a little while, I'm, I'm actually finding out that the, the front of the, <laughs> the scene is that away. Right. And then it's starting to drift a little bit more. And at that point, you're kind of stuck. So if you're an mm. app developer, you definitely have to think about these kind of things and give an affordance to the users to be able to recenter the camera, for example. I see. Right. Great. Yeah. Uh, so now that I've kind of a basic understanding of like how do I write an app and what are the coach, like cultures, are, are there examples out there that I should check out if I want to get some inspiration of like given all these constraints, like what makes a good yeah. um, app so essentially? One of the official Google apps is uh, gives you the cardboard design patterns. I really oh. highly recommend that one. Okay. App. It's going to give you a lot of cues about uh, what kind of UIs can you put in game, where the text, where should you put the text, how far from the user's face should it be. And it's in the form of an app itself, so you can yeah. put it into your cardboard and actually experience exactly. the and guidelines. It's actually, okay. it's actually one of the most beautiful apps so far. Oh, wow. Yeah, you, you're walking through the woods. There's a really good use of 3D audio. A lot of good. Oh, audio! Yeah. That's interesting. Audio is super in important, right? Mm. Uh, thing to think about that, though. It, one of the challenges is not everybody's going to actually put their headphones on, right? right. So you kind of hope so, but you mm -hmm. can't, you know, rely on it 100. percent Right. That's that's basically the rule of thumb for any kind of cardboard app is you mm -hmm. can't rely basically on, on anything. anything. <laughs> well, except the fact that there will be a split screen. Yeah. <laughs> like, and even even kind of the lens. Distortion yeah. will be it changes varying. But 
that this, this, the SDK is supposed to provide you with a way. So when you scan a, a barcode on the side of the cardboard viewers, mm. a, a typical cardboard viewer will have yeah. a barcode. It actually configures a small file. It's a, it's a protobuf uh, encoding okay. that will tell the SDK, okay, you're using viewer X mm -hmm. that has this interpupillary distance. I managed <laughs> to say it in one way, in one go. Uh, it will also uh, factor in the lens distortion and the distance to screen because all the viewers will have different oh, settings. Oh, so, so it's basically the specs that send to your app exactly. and then you can adjust accordingly. Yeah, and there's even some viewers that adapt to seven inch tablets and those absolutely need to have like different viewing parameters. Yeah, I know. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's a bit funny, those. I tried them out. I'm yeah. not my favorite one, but yeah. Wow, cool. So that's the, what is it called again? The Google Design? Uh, Google Cardboard? Design Patterns. Patterns, uh, okay. Yeah. If you look it up... Uh, we'll put it in yeah. the show notes. We'll yeah, get the link it's an easy, him. yeah. It's an Great. Easy, Is there yeah, any yeah. other one that we should... Uh, I, I really up? recommend that one okay. first and foremost. There's a few uh, very nice 3D videos. Uh, I think the app's called Verse, and they have like a whole catalog of... of uh, the, the writing is a bit weird, so V-R-S-E, I think. We'll, we'll also oh, yeah, we'll add it. Yeah, we'll Great. Add it. And I actually heard on, well, of all places, public radio, that New York Times is trying to get into the cardboard yeah. scene. Yeah, so they distributed, I think, 1.5 million viewers. Wow. Uh, so a lot of them are out there now. That's mm -hmm. actually quite an opportunity if you want to start writing apps. And what are they doing with it? Uh, they've been doing photo reporting, I believe. Mm. So I think one of the first things was a, a sort of a photo shoot in in a Syrian uh, oh, a refugee so, camp. Oh, so so you can sort of feel you, yeah. like that you are on the field and yeah. then experience what they experience. Yeah, and it's a it's a great experience and it's a great way to sort of feel empathy and, and understand what these people are living. Right. right? So, that's, that's so this is a very young field, but yeah. which means that everybody who wants to get started. You don't have a lot of disadvantage of people who already has done it for 10 years because that's not really, yeah. you know. The, the constraints are not there. The opportunity is yeah. huge because if you do, I'll be honest, I don't think there's actually right now a killer app for cardboard. Right. Except you the can ones, write it. You can write it. Yeah, <laughs> cool. Um, so I think I don't want to get too technical on this uh, interview because I know that you gave a talk mm -hmm. before. And um, maybe you can just get me a quick summary of like what else did you cover in that talk and then we'll link to it so that people can learn right, more. Right, right. So the talk was all about uh, the challenges that you're going to face as an app developer trying mm -hmm. to get into Carver. Like I wasn't necessarily, I wasn't at all an open jail <laughs> professional. Right. So when I first started, I, I ran into a ton of problems. And one of the big things is mm -hmm. that every time you tweak your, your OpenGL pipeline, it's going to crash. Like inevitably, you're, you're going to badly right. configure it. You're Something sort of bad is going to happen. Right. So, and I was inspired by a lot of WebGL content that is all around live coding. When you edit your source code, you actually see results in, in, in like in real time. Nice. So I tried to build an environment using the Cardboard SDK in Java where we could actually replicate that on Android and sort right. of be able to experiment and try to create scenes and, and have a bit of fun without, you know, like the difficulty of always having Waiting to Waiting for your APK cycle. to deploy. Yeah, and then just finding out it doesn't work. So <laughs> right, on, cool. On and on and on, so, yeah. yeah, that sounds like a great way to accelerate development. Yeah, cool. so far I've had a, a good amount of success and it's a public GitHub that, uh, nice. that I share. We'll definitely link all that to the yeah. show notes. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And if people want to follow up and see what else you do, where can they find you on the internet? Uh, I think uh, I'm mostly active on my Twitter. Uh, we'll put a link. Uh, okay. And uh, my GitHub is the other right place to, to go. Okay. Sounds like he doesn't want to spell it for us. So we'll, we'll, we'll put it here. It will be fine. You'll see it. Yeah. Well, great chatting with you. Thank you Thank so much you so for much coming. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.